At Skyhoy, we are proud to be Kros Alliance partners, and therefore we offer extensive third-party control options for Kros. We have showcased our Master Key One panel with Kros previously, and today I'm excited to introduce the Mega Panel. And for this demonstration, I have the slim version configured with three MEs and additional utility modules on the right side. We have recently added the Smart Delegation feature to Kros, which we will also explore today. My intention, though, is to keep this video brief, so please don't hesitate to contact us with any questions. Kros is a comprehensive platform, and it is impossible to cover everything in a single video. The capabilities of Kros are vast and impressive, and we are proud to support a very significant portion of them. The mega panel in this slim version, as you see, is designed to be built into the table in your OB truck or your master control room. And in a sense, you see it uh, kind of backstage today. You can get a glimpse where you would normally not see it. And uh, <laughs> we also placed LED strips to give it a little extra swag for trade shows and this video. So um, I hope you appreciate that. But the modules are coming really tightly together. You'll find that these modules have names and also the exact same hardware configuration as the, the usual master key 48. And um, this is called T block A and B or left and right. Those are also found in, in uh, standalone modules. The slim version is simply compressing the space that we don't need when we want them to sit together in a modular way like that. And talking about modularity, each of these modules, they actually have the power to become like the brain of the others. And that's what we're doing today. This one, this module is actually the brain of these nine. It's controlling these nine and assigning the configuration to them so that the interaction with Kros is all governed by this one. The other ones are guest panels on this. And if you have watched our videos about modularity, you know it's super easy. You just pick that configuration and you add additional panels, which are all IP connected, powered over PoE with single Ethernet cables. Each one of these MEs, they are running the same configuration. And therefore, the difference you see today where this is, we call it the main currently, and we have one called sidecar up here, that has only to do with which scene has been selected on them. And scene selection happens when you push that button. You see over here we have main, two box, three box, OTS left, OTS right, title, sidecar. And this ME row up here is just assigned sidecar. So if I pick main, you'll see that these two are now synchronous. If I pick a different preview source on this one, it follows along up here. If I cut, these will also mirror each other. So essentially, it's super easy to set them up differently. You just pick which scene you want any of these panels to represent, and it will be completely self-reliant on all of that. And that, that's essentially how you set this up. The one in the middle is actually using smart delegation. So if you notice what happens on this one, as I am making a cut, you'll see this is adapting to the selected source on preview. So right now on preview, this is driving what this panel is gonna do. You also see a multi-view over here. And if you wonder about latency, we are connected to a KROS in Japan. <laughs> so, and we are in Denmark, just to let you know. So we do have latency on the connection to the external system we are running. I wanna show you the smart delegation. First of all, yeah, you can see that this is adapting to whatever source is here, but now we are on preview, we have the uh, I think it's the uh, three box that is seen here, and there are snapshots we can recall. So if I press this one, ah, I think that was the default, but if we go to the full, then you'll see that the uh, preview on the multi-viewer is now uh, animating to the, the full snapshot. Then we have one called swap, which is, um, yeah, you'll see that in comparison to the default, that is essentially swapping the two boxes on the left side. So this snapshot function is found up here, and um, it can also be brought out on the other panels. And I'll show you that now because that comes back to how this uh, layout can be configured. So preview row, we have program row, we have cut, we have auto. We also do have a T-bar transition over here that we can, um, we can use. Uh, we have uh, transitions that we can assign. I'll come back to that in a moment. But if I press this button up here, I now have a little menu that allows me to select what happens on these rows. The first one here would be um, basically, yeah, no, actually, if we just go back, then you can see on the software version of the panel that as I'm selecting sources here, I am selecting a source for layer number one. It's actually shown in the display. So it says layer one, 
and that's the source I'm selecting for. What if I want to select sources for layer two? Then I would go in here, and if I want to go all the way from the start, I would say first, okay, scene select. So now I can select which scene is it for. It is the main scene, okay? Then which layer is it? It is layer two. And then I'm now on layer two, I have only one source. But that's essentially the source that I could now assign. Let's go back to scene. I pick, let me see, okay, scene select, we pick main, we pick layer one, and now I'm back to what I had just a moment ago. There's one thing that you wanna know, and that is over here we have auto scene, and auto scene is cool because the first choice I made was selecting my scene, but in most cases you want auto scene to be enabled so that it is the scene that is assigned generally to this row that drives what you are uh, selecting up here on the, um, on, on, on this row up here. And that is exactly what's happening. You can see this is following along. Now that we are on the two box, you actually have left and you have a two box background. Uh, the background, if you watch the, the two box on screen, I think now we got over to the multi-viewer, so that may not be so efficient. Let, let's just get out of this one, go back to the main scene and not uh, pick the multi-viewer, but we'll pick two box down here. That's great, okay. Now um, let's go over to the two box and then look at the background that we can select for this one. So there we have a different background. Let's just keep this one. Although the two box, no, wait, I think that's the one that I want. Okay, perfect. Good, and then I go back to the main scene. So now you have seen scene selection on each of these MEs. You have seen the um, smart delegation. This one is following along um, what I'm selecting down here. You have seen how I'm able to affect what I see in, in, in this row here. And here you have the snapshots that we saw also up here for the uh, smart delegation assigned row. So these snapshots, and that is for the, uh, I think it is the three box layout. But anyway, they are here to execute. And what else do we have? We have scene macros that I can um, uh, call. We also have global macros that we can recall, and we have aux select. In this case, we have two auxes, and I don't wanna mess up with them because they are currently, uh, but I can select which aux source it is, and then I can assign sources to the aux bus that I picked. And then finally, we also have aux source uh, directly over here. So if I pick aux source directly, it is remembering which aux bus that I was at, and that was aux number one. So if I go to aux source there, it brings me straight to aux number one, which is also shown in the display. Okay, thanks for listening to all of that. Let's move over to the transition section. I hope you got a kind of idea about how this delegation over here work. It's a workflow that you'll quickly get used to if you know KROS and when you get these uh, two Master Key 48 uh, panels sitting together. By the way, just, just for a moment, think about how smooth these panels are working together. It's not like you think this is three individual pieces of hardware. It is, but it is so smoothly integrated that you don't, consider that even once while working with it. Over here we have transition uh, management, which you will also know from KROS. I gotta admit that it is a bit overwhelming to me as I was introduced to it, so I'm not like the exact expert on it. But um, you can choose uh, the different types of transitions that you can enable and disable, and there is even a switch uh, or shift function that gives you access to additional of these. And down here you have an override function for your um, transition so that you can basically force through a mix type or wipe left or squeeze on these buttons down here when you use the auto or the T-bar for um, operating the KROS uh, with the mega panel. Final two points, we can open an engineering menu on each of these configurations. And inside of that one, this is where you find stuff like which KROS are you connected to? We can in fact be correct, connected to multiple KROS systems, so you can change that. Now I'm on KROS 2, back on 1. We have a sleep time for the displays, and we have a IP address for the system as well. There is a second page, and on that second page, this is where you turn smart delegation on and off for any of these ME rows, just to let you know. The other thing that I want to just highlight here is that we do have user functions. There is like user one and user two, where if you pick those, we have user assignable keys. It can be assigned in the software reactor that runs on these panels. So it's also possible to actually extend it easily in this way. This is a um, configuration dependent way of doing it, which is like built into the menu system. And then there's always the way Reactor allows you to do anything on top of existing out of the box configurations. That is to overlay it all with a completely uh, like blank layer with anything that you want. So there's 
vast opportunities for customizing your multi-ME KROS panel using the software that is built inside the panels. So thank you for watching this video. If you find the content in our YouTube channel helpful, then please consider liking and subscribing to us. We welcome your comments here or on social media, and we would really love to engage with you, assist you in any way we can, and to answer your questions that you may have about our products, the mega panel, the slim version. So for any further assistance, please reach out to our sales or support team, and they'll be happy to email with you.